Tasha. How's it going? You okay? Yeah, I'm good. Thanks. Good, good. Uh, in regards to your last outing with uh, with Terry Harper, do you think mentally now that uh, you're prepared to knock out Katie Taylor? Do you think you can't leave it to the to the judges' hands? Is that what you're preparing for? Um, I'm just like I can only control what I can control, and the judges is not one of them. So, you know. The, the boxing I can, my skills I can, and everything else is out of my control. So I've not really, I haven't focused on on the judges and on and how they decide to score because that's nothing that I can control. It's not giving myself too much stress. And um, going back, you know, nine years ago, the uh, the Olympics, you fought you fought Katie before as well uh, in the amateur scene. Did you ever think that you guys were going to cross paths in the pro scene and, and fighting for all the belts one day as well? Yeah, I, did. I, th I think we was always on a, a bit of a collision course. Um, and obviously, me losing to Open Off just delayed that slightly. Um, I think like, one of the best things that could have happened was, was the Teddy Harper because it's given me this opportunity. So, um, yeah, I think, you know, we've come a long way, but we're two different fighters, but uh, we'll both present the best version of ourselves to, on Saturday. Brilliant. Best of luck, uh, Tasha, on Saturday night. Have a great day. Cheers. Thank you. Thanks, Davinda. If we go to Riaf next, please. Hi, Tasha. You all right? Hi, yeah. Um, Tasha, I'm sure, I'm sure it's been something you've been asked about plenty of times in the past, but just kind of going back to that 2012 fight, how did that, how did that shape you as a fighter? How, what kind of influence has that beat had on your career, would you say? I think um, at the time, uh, possibly in 2012, I honestly, hand on heart, believe that Katie was the only person that could have beat me. Um, I was on a projection, which was just, you know, I'd come out of the, the World Championships on a, on a different level and a different high um, after getting a bronze medal. And I knew how I finally believed in how good I was. When did it first come into your mind then, sort of between that fight and now, when did it first kind of come into your mind that you kind of knew you were going to have to fight her again at some point or wanted to fight her again? I think I've always wanted to fight her again. Um, I just, you know, our paths have just never crossed since. Um, and it sounds mad, but we've, we've only crossed paths so few times, even though we was in the same way for such a long, long time. And it just so happens that it's now. And you've just got to take your opportunities when they come. As I said before, um, after the open off, I didn't know if I'd ever get back on the path. <laughs> um, so it was just, you know, like I said, once the half a fight was done and dusted and, and the opportunity came, I've always took my opportunities when they come and I've got it. So I'm not, I'm not complaining too much now. I know Joe Gallagher's made a few comments um, about about Katie and about certain <clears throat> vulnerabilities. And obviously, we saw in the kind of two Pursuit fights that uh, sort of, well, neither of them really went her uh, in the entire way. I mean, you could argue she was fortuitous with both results. I mean, what have you what have you seen in her? What 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 do you what weaknesses do you see that perhaps we didn't see prior to those fights? I don't think it's about weaknesses. I just think the the order of of the boxer that she is. You know, we have these same orders. About there's very few that we have them. Lomachenko's, Anthony Joshua's, and and then someone comes along and and beats them or you know, makes them human. <laughs> and I think that's just what it was. It was it, we we always expect such high standards from her that uh, we always must put it on a pedestal kind of thing. And then someone comes along and and just proves that they are just. Just, just, just like any other boxer, they have got flaws, they have got weaknesses, they are human, make mistakes. Um, I don't take too much from the pursuing fights because, you know, I, I, I'm not pursuing and I, I don't box like that. So, you know, I think pursuing is a, is a tough fight for anybody. Uh, a work rate is, is very high. Uh, you know, a skill set's not as high as others, but, you know, she, she makes up for it and hard work and determination, so... Thanks. Okay, we go to Wingy Boxing next, please. Hey, Tasha, how are you? You well? I'm good, thank you. 
okay, right. I've got to make sure I get this quote right because when you get boxers' quotes wrong, they get paid off. So I just wanted to, right. I, I remember what you, you said on commentary on Sky Sports, I believe, uh, the Bridges and Courtney fight, that you was a little bit uh, jealous or, or you want to have that sort of moment that they're having. Um, do you see yourself here now and are you ready to show and prove now you've got that moment that they had? Yeah, I think any time that I step into the ring, I want to perform well. Um, but yeah, I was jealous. It has been such a I'm long time. I'm glad you said that. I, was... I didn't get it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I was. And, and, you know, you sit there and, you you, you know, you, you sit there thinking, when's it going to be my turn? When's it going to be my turn? And all eyes are on women's boxing for whatever reason. And the women are stepping up to the plate and... and and, and showing that the I should be there for all the right reasons. And, and, and now Saturday, it will be our time. And I, I think both of us will, will put on a, a good performance and a, and a good show for the fans that are watching. And a lot of people have said to me, I'm sure you've heard it, that in their opinion, they see this like as a top of the bill sort of fight. How do you feel when you hear that? Does that make you, per not perform differently, but do you go into the fight with a different set of expectations? Like you want to, sort of really show people what, what you can do when you get there? I just don't take it like that. I just think that it shows for me how far, you know, women's boxing has come from the days of, oh, it's the women, you know, and now <laughs> all of a sudden it's, you know, why aren't these headline on a pay-per-view card? That, that shows how, in such a short space of time, how far it's come and how accepting the fans are and how appreciative they are of women's boxing at its highest level. Well, I'll, I'll let you go. I don't think anybody's saying, oh, it's the women, it's the women now. We love it. We love it. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks. Okay, we go to Cynthia from Ring TV, please. Can you hear me? Yep. yep. Okay. Hi, Tasha. Cynthia Conte from Ring TV, Ring Magazine. Good to see you again. Cool. Um, yeah, I remember okay. the last time we spoke, we ke I kept advocating for this fight for you to have a rematch with Katie Taylor, and now it has come about. Uh, let's talk about the challenges. Does that fight back in 2012 with her, does that ever replay back in your mind when you're training for this fight? Uh, or do you just put it all away and have Joel Gallagher do it all for you? No, I think the only thing that I, I remember is, you know, the pain of losing, which I don't want to do. So <laughs> the, the actual fight itself, there's, there's not really much that we can take from that fight because it's nine years ago. We are two different people, two different boxers. And and it, even though it's the same sport, it, it's different. You know, we're not point scoring. We've got more than four rounds. And, you, you, you know, you get being a, a bigger puncher benefits you. You know, in, in amateurs, you get knocked down. You just get a point and that's it. You know, here you win 10, 8 rounds. So it, there's lots of differences. And I don't think we're, we're even the same people that we are then. We're, we're going to present the best version of us now. I saw on your Instagram that uh, I remember when we did talk about you were a mother, you had to lose weight and Joe wanted you to come back into boxing. And now your daughter is working alongside of you. She's, she has your back. Talk about your daughter being in training camp with you for such a mega fight. It's massive. Uh, you know, she, not only does she get to see what mom does, she, she like, she, she, she knows what that a box and she, she's trying to, mom's work is the gym but she never actually knew what went into what, what happens in the gym. Now she does. Um, she's motivation for me. You know, she's counting me reps as I'm doing them. She's giving me water in between rounds. I'm chasing her down the track. And for, for, for me, just to have her there is, is, is inspiration in itself. And for, for, for me being a mum, I hope she sees that, you know, all the hard work that goes into it. And just because, you know, people say things and put barriers up and, and, and whatever, that, you know, if you work hard, that anything is possible. I never understood when we talked about being a mother in sport, but now I am a new mother as of 12 days ago. That's why oh, I couldn't interview you. <laughs> I was in labor. <laughs> but, and lastly, what do you find more challenging? Fighting or working behind the mic? Um... I think the training for the for the fight is 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 the hardest bit. I, I, like 
fights are won and lost in the gym. And but I, I love that also. That's the part that I love the most because you're pushing yourself every time you walk through the door. Um, but definitely just sitting back and chilling and, and you know, critiquing other people's um boxing is 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 easier than you know the stress of, of you going into the ring and, and performing and, and living up to what you expect of yourself. Yeah. Well, best of luck to you, Tasha, this weekend and stay safe in the ring, both you and Katie. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks, Cynthia. If we go to Jim Conlon next, please. Uh, hi, Chris. Uh, Jim Conlon here from RCB Radio Sport Ireland. Uh, Tasha, you mentioned there about the the last time you met, it was only four rounds. This time around now, we're in a professional sort of environment, we're in a longer sort of fight. Does that really sort of change the game plan in terms of strategy, in terms of those opening rounds to try and settle your way into the sort of fight? Because we know Katie Taylor is not the person you want to be hunting rounds back of or chasing down. So is it wise to take on a sort of a different strategic approach rather than the last time we met in terms of a longer sort of more cagey or sort of a fight in terms of those opening rounds? I think um, I just think pro boxing is different anyway. Than obviously the, the longer rounds mean you you know you're not chasing the points. So it, it, sometimes in amateur, if you're you know two points down, three or five points down after the second round, you chasing that for two rounds leaves you more vulnerable. If you're two rounds down in professional boxing, you've got another eight rounds to catch it up. You know, so it's it's not it's not the same kind kind of like stress and pressure because you, you've got it feels like you've got more time to 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 get like I say catch it up. Uh just one quick one more uh for me Tasha to you uh do you think um we see Katie in the ring she never seems to get phased or sort of flustered and would that be a big sort of onus for you a big sort of psychological plus if you could maybe Bluster her or unfaze her in the opening sort of rounds in terms of make her think on the spot. Um, obviously, yeah. Anytime you you can see physically see, um, you, you always look trying to pick up on on stuff on on your opponents. You know what what they're going to do next, or you know what shot hit, or what 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 reactions they've got to what shot you're throwing. And I think to to be able to see physically see that you've hit it is obviously a, a a gold man for any boxer, but just because we, we don't, I wouldn't say that we, she's never been hurt or, or she she hides it well. Is, is what I will say is that you know she's been in this game for so long and she's such a a, a boxing IQ is so there that she she masks it well. I don't think that she hasn't not been hurt, and I, I do think she has been flustered. I do think she's been. It's just that either commentary doesn't pick up on it or we, we she maps it that well that we don't see it. Best luck, Tasha. Cheers, thank you. Okay, if we go to Sasha Jones next, please. Hi, Tasha, how are you? I'm good, thanks, you're all right. I'm good, thanks. Um, obviously, similar to the Terry Harper fight, you're going into this one as the underdog. How are you using that as motivation? Again, it's just, you know, uh, the worst thing you can tell me is that I, I'm, I'm like worse than me little girl. The worst thing you can tell me is that I can't do it because I'm going to prove to you that I can. Um, so, yeah, you know, people have been putting me in boxes and putting, you know, barriers up to what they say they believe that I can do, be, see. And, and for my whole life, I've been knocking them down and proving them wrong. So, you know, being the underdog for me is, is nothing new. Yeah, thank you. Good luck on Saturday. Cheers, thank you. Okay, let's go to Gail next, please. Hey, Natasha. Are you all right? I'm good, how are you? I'm good, thanks. Um, I just wanted to ask about your last fight with Terry Harper. Um, there's a lot of talk on social media where a lot of people actually think that you did enough to take the win in that fight. Um, does that make you feel like um, you have to take the decision away for the judges next time around? Um, no, 
I just, I've just got to, it, it puts a, a thought in my mind that I have to win more convincingly. That it does put that in my mind. But what the judges do, like I said before, it's got not, I can't control that. So there's no point in stressing about it. And what, once the decision's made, it's not going to be unmade. So yeah. I can just only do what I can do. Um, and ho- yeah, hopefully, hopefully they see what everybody else sees. Thanks a lot and best of luck on Saturday. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Gail. If we go to Carlos Toro next, please. Hi, Natasha. Thanks so much for taking time to talk to us. You know, when it comes to prepare for this fight, obviously for uh, for titles at lightweight compared to your last fight fighting for a title at super featherweight, how different do you feel physically now that you had those extra pounds to sort of work with compared to the Terry Harper fight? Do you feel better physically or how different do you feel in preparation for this fight compared to the last one? It's actually mad. I went for testing um, just before, well, not just before, like last week. Um, Even though I'm heavier, I'm actually muscle mass leaner. Um, My fat fat, uh, percentage has dropped and is lower than Harper. So I feel physic like I do like people say all the time, you know, physically in the best shape of my life, because you expect to be. Um, but I genuinely do feel like that. Uh, you know, I'm stronger. Um, me stats are saying that I'm better. Everything says that I'm better. Thank you, Natasha. Best of luck on Saturday. Cheers, thank you. Okay, we go to Louis from Fight Post. Next, please. Oh, hi, Natasha. Um, so this question's less about your fight on Saturday, more just about your career in general. Um, so I was thinking when it's all you know said and done, you're retired, how would you like to be remembered as a boxer and as a person? Um, as a game changer. Simple, be all and end all, yeah. Brilliant, thank you. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, I didn't elaborate on that anymore, but... That, that's, that's it, yeah, that's game changer and champion, that's it. Thank you. Cheers. Okay, if you've got a Jesse with your hand up, if you want to ask you a question. If not, we'll move on. Okay, we've got Brett, if you want to ask your question, mate. Cheers, Dan. Hi, Tash. Thanks very much for giving us the time to speak to you. No problems. Um, it's just a quick one. You mentioned earlier that there's an aura around Katie Taylor that's actually made her seem uh, human-like and not an inv- invincible, I think, as a lot of people have previously referred to. You, you're known as what we saw from the part, uh, from the previous Terry Harper fight, that you bring so much pressure and you bring so much energy. Is, is there that element on Saturday and when we talk about this aura that Katie Taylor potentially won't like to have it put on her with that much pressure? Um, potentially. I, I, I'm just... Uh, what I did for the Harper was prepare for every eventual eventuality and put the best version of me on show and um, I do think the cut changed things a little bit because I had to be protective of the eye because I didn't want it to get any worse so that that was that was something that I didn't account for that happened and you've got to change as you do in boxing there's always stuff that happens and um, but for me you, you know sorry I forgot the question <laughs> are you going to be able to put it on her on Saturday do you think she's going to dislike oh yeah um, I, like I yeah I'll just be putting my best foot forward and prepare for I've prepared for every version that she can come with and the best version of everything that she can come with so we'll see all right Tash thanks very much and uh, good luck for Saturday nice one okay we go to Steve from Boxing UK please Hi, Tasha. It's Steve from Boxing UK. You all right, Steve? Hello. Uh, Tasha, last time we spoke, you said this was the biggest fight of your pro career. Can you tell us exactly why? And can we expect another fight of the year contender? You can always expect a fight of the year contender when I'm in the ring. Steve, you're going to have to change it up before I start speaking. <laughs> you were all right last time. <laughs> it is. It is. Yeah, I, I think, you know... I think it's just, we've just got styles that gel, and it's just going to be it's going to be fireworks. And the best version of me versus the best version of Katie, you know, what is there not to like? You know, what was the first part of your question as well, sorry? Yeah, you said to us last time that it was um, the big, biggest fight of your pro career. Um, why is that? It's just you know, 
I, I kicked up a fuss and cried and spat me dummy out about not being able to have two belts. And now I've got the chance to box for four and be undisputed lightweight champion. And, you know, if you can't get yourself up for nights like this, you're probably in the wrong spot. Absolutely. Best luck of the week, and Tasha. Take care. Nice one. Thanks, Steve. We go to Gavin next, please. Hi, Tasha. Uh, going back as far as Katie's professional debut, I think you did punditry for Sky that night. You were ringside and you were asked afterwards, would you fancy getting in with her again then? And you kind of laughed it off and jokingly said no. And I guess <laughs> late, later in her career, uh, we saw Ava Wallstrom, another amateur rival of hers, fight, move up in weight, fight Katie, uh, perform well, but afterwards admit that she actually didn't really believe she would beat Katie. It was more a, a kind of a life experience for her to fight her as a pro and test herself against the best without that innate belief that she could actually beat her. Do you have that innate belief or is this a, a kind of a similar thing with Wallstrom? I, I don't mean it to be a disrespectful question, but is it about testing yourself or actually going in fully believing you would win? No, that it is a good question. Genuinely, in the 2012 Olympics, I believe, like I said, she was the only person in the Olympics that could have beat me. And I genuinely, it's just unfortunate that it drew her so early and then we fought early. And I, I do think she was just the better boxer. And I, 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 she was the only one that I didn't want to want to draw because I did, deep down inside, knew, knew that she could beat me. And um, now I think, we're, like I say, I keep saying it, we're two different boxers. And I think that means you know, that, that puts us in good stead for a whole different version of me and a whole different version of Katie because I, I'm not in it for the, you know, the money, the, the I'm in it for the clout is in the belt, but I'm not in it for anything like that. But it, this this is this is intrinsic and I, I genuinely believe I can win and I wouldn't say that otherwise. Thanks a million. Best of luck. Cheers, thank you. Okay, guys, we've got uh, a just in the way to bring up what more so do you want to ask your final question please oh who did you you said marshall brown no donut if you can hear me oh right? yeah hey what's up sorry i didn't hear the uh the call yeah um Natasha, first off, thank you for, for taking the time to talk. Uh, what I notice when I look at the coverage and the way that people talk about boxing versus, um, for example, mixed martial arts, you had these two huge title fights over the weekend over in MMA, and the entire discussion beforehand is about uh, strategy. It's about, um, you know, who's got the, the better kicks, who's got the better wrestling, whereas with, with women's boxing, it appears that there's always some element of historical significance. It always seems like something is happening for the, the women's sport in, in women's boxing. What do you think that promoters need to do to make it more uh, just a, a part of, of everyday discussion of the sport, uh, women's fights? Um, I think, like I said before, we are moving in the right direction when people are saying, why aren't you stopping the bill? As opposed to, you know, so many years ago saying, why are women boxing? It shows that we, we've come a long way and, and people, like I say, are entertained by boxing at its highest level. And we are, we're the, the big driving force in that, we as the athletes. Um, you know, I think getting out on the big shows, I think, you know, the getting, being visible to everybody, men, women, you know, we're 50% of the, uh, of the, population but we're not 50 percent of the boxing audience so, so we need to appeal we need to get out there and, and be appealing to everybody and and you know yeah just being visible uh, the brand power that you know certain promoters and and, and the media have you need to get in supporters and and, and just be, just be fair you know we, we, we go on a lot but it, you know it, it's not fair i have to get across